there's a pandemic going on in the world that has nothing to do with a virus. It has everything to do with people's attention span and learning. People need a rush of dopamine in order to catch their attention or a rush of adrenaline to learn. They're dependent on their outer environment to regulate their emotional state. Now, this is different now. Now, I'm going to say to you, get in that beautiful heart of yours, and I want you to feel gratitude for the event before it occurs. Well, I can't feel it because it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, that's the conditioning. That's the hypnosis. So then when you teach people how to create heart coherence and self-regulate, and it makes sense then with a coherent brain, they can hold the image of their future. Mm -hmm. They can actually then rehearse who they're going to be. They can bring up the emotions of their future. Now, here's the cool part. If they can feel their gratitude before their healing, their healing begins. If they feel their abundance or their worthiness before they have their wealth, it will start generating abundance. If they start being in love with themselves and being in love with life, they'll create an equal. That's the law. If they're in awe of life or in awe of the moment, they're going to have a mystical experience. If they're empowered, they're going to start stepping towards a success. So then when we wait for the outer world to change our internal state, that's a conditioning process because some people will live in lack and separation their entire life because they're not creating anything. When this happens, then I'll feel happy. That's the illusion of three-dimensional reality. That's cause and effect. But feeling the emotion ahead of the experience is causing an effect. So the heart, when it's coherent, tends to produce an external magnetic field that's up to three meters wide. Now you've got a Wi-Fi signal. Now when you have a coherent brain, the brain could actually lay the information on that signal. And the thought of your wealth or your health can be carried on the frequency of that heart emotion. Emotions are the end product of an experience, right? Epigenetics says that it's the environment that signals the gene. If the environment signals the gene and the end product of an experience in the environment is an emotion, that person's signaling genes ahead of the environment. And now they're biologically believing, behaving, and actually becoming that person. So if the person sustains that state, and we look at novice meditators that come for a week, and 90% of them, and, and the metabolites, not just a few, the majority of the metabolites and novice meditators suggest that their body's in a different life. Coherence is rhythm. It's a cadence. And when you're in fear or you're in survival and your heart rate increases and your respiratory rate increases, your brain waves go up into this aroused state, right? And people spend 70% of their life anticipating the worst case scenario that's going to happen in their life and prepare for the worst. Chronic stress does what? It causes us to hold our breath. All right. So we found, you know, in our research and working with the HeartMath Institute and also some of the stuff we've been doing, that if you slow your breathing down, you slow your brain waves down. And if you teach your body to move out of survival, there's only one other thing it wants to do. It wants to create, right? Mm -hmm. So now just imagine a big drum. And now you're so contracted that you can't, you can't hit that drum. And as you learn and teach a person how to convert from that fight or flight nervous system to the nervous system of relaxation, the heart actually starts to bloom. And when you place your attention on your heart, we have the data. I can say this emphatically. And when that heart starts to beat in rhythm, it starts to inform the brain that it's time to create. Like taking a big sheet and going like this, a wave of energy goes right to the brain. The brain goes right in the alpha and says, it's safe now to create. Examine other possibilities. You're out of survival, right? So then as you hit that drum repeatedly, there's a wave of sound that's produced. And the more coherent it is, the more it can carry information, right? Or if you drop a pebble in the water and you drop another pebble in the water and you drop another pebble in the water, when your heart is coherent, there's a magnetic feel, right? So then the person's having a spontaneous love attack. Mm -hmm. They've done it enough times, their body's going, hey, uh, it's been about uh, two hours uh, without a little love. Well, let me, just, let me just automatically do that. And so now, when you feel these elevated emotions, it activates the pro-social networks in the brain. Survival creates the protective networks. Like, I don't trust you. I'm separate. I'm, you're different. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm selfish right now. It's all about me. Let's compete. Let's fight. Let's, let's uh, 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 you know, manipulate. Let's force it. Let's control it. Let's do matter trying to change matter. That's kind of the program, right? It is. So then 
the opposing part of this is that when people start to connect and they start to have these elevated states, then something really unusual happens. The, the, the reality seems to conform in ways that are equal to who they're being. So now the heart is saying to the brain, it's time to create. And now your energy has changed and nothing changes until we change our energy. And when you change your energy, you change your life, right? And so then the idea then is to be able to maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day. And as I said, get so good at doing it with your eyes closed that you can do with your eyes open. Now, if you can sustain that state for an extended period of time, I don't care what you want, and people have created all kinds of things. I use health as the example because it's really relatable. Now, all of a sudden, it's like you're no longer having to go and get it and do something like matter to matter to go get it. And until you arrive at that experience, you're in lack or separation until the experience happens. It takes a feeling like, oh my God. Well, this is kind of like the opposite. This is like you're not going anywhere. Everything's coming to you. So the thought tends to have an electrical charge in the quantum field. It tends to be the directive. It sends the signal out. And the heart tends to have a magnetic field. It tends to draw the experience to us. So then if you teach people how to create from the field instead of from matter, they will shorten the distance between the thought of what they want and the experience of having it between the cause and the effect. Now, think about three-dimensional reality. Many people can develop the skills to become successful. They can make the right choices. They can study real hard. They can practice. They can get trained. But they're going to follow certain rules of Newtonian physics. It's just going to take time to get what you want. It's just going to take time and hard work. There's nothing wrong with that. You do that for a while, and sooner or later, you're going to say, is there another way? Now, this is where it gets exciting, OK? If it's not matter that's emitting the field, it's the field that's creating matter. If I can change the information in the field, I can change the expression in three-dimensional reality. So if you can teach a person to become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, in no time, to become pure consciousness and disconnect and dissociate from everything physical and known in their three-dimensional reality, and we have data to say that people can do this. Now, all of a sudden, if they become aware that they can actually connect to that field with their awareness, their consciousness, their awareness in infinite vacuum and in emptiness in space, it would be like the illusion is the virtual reality headset. You're taking the headset off. You can't get the upgrade from inside of it. If you could have a coherent heart and a coherent brain and create from the field instead of from matter, every thought in the quantum field produces a frequency. If you can feel the frequency of that thought, and you experience it, you're shortening the distance between the thought of what you want and the experience of it. And you're creating coherent patterns of energy in the field <laughs> that actually change the hologram in three-dimensional reality. So, so for me personally, I've done a lot of the matter, the matter stuff, got really good at it. And then I just said, there's got to be another way. So demystify the process. I don't care what you want. I don't care if it's a trip somewhere or a a new life or a new car or whatever, people who do this, what do you think they feel when they see that first synchronicity? You think they're gonna be like, oh, pff, I don't wanna meditate tomorrow, I'm gonna do this. Are you kidding? The synchronicity happens and the energy, the surprise wakes the person up and they go, whatever I'm doing inside of me is producing some effect outside of me.